Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all our viewers across the globe. Welcome to M4 TV from the studio of Melbourne to Let's Connect. World on shock COVID-19. The confirmed cases have crossed more than 500,000. Stock markets are in free fall. COVID has triggered an unprecedented crisis in the human history, of which scale of it is being unwearing, has disrupted the whole world. The whole world is shut. Airports are closed. Even first time in the history, Olympics dates has been moved. And this leads us to a big question. Is the COVID-19 world's biggest intelligence failure? Did no top class intelligence team found it's been coming? By the time the world swung into action, the deadliest virus has pierced into every single border. And it has inspired even a single country across the globe. And it's absolutely playing a catch up. Every day, each and every countries are been closing their numbers. Italy has crossed more than 13,000 deaths. Spain, it's leading, leading, getting close to a five digit. There is no doubt the classic cities of most of the countries, including Melbourne, Mumbai, Milan, London, Sydney, has been absolutely closed. What are the things which the government has been doing implementing in Australia for the safety and the security of the 2.7 millions of people living over here. For today, we have a very exclusive special guest, the dashing young dynamic, ex-councillor, city of Casey, ex-deputy mayor from the city of Casey. No doubt, I could say more than a councillor or a deputy mayor, one of the good friends of the community. A very great community worker, I would say anytime, if you need him, give him a call. He's ready 24 round the clock, 24 hours round the clock. And he's none other than our most favorite ex councillor. Welcome, Damien Rosario, to Let's Connect with M4 TV. Hi, Damien. Good evening. Hi, good evening. How's that going? You guys Absolutely are going great. wonderful. Thank you. How are you doing? Wow. Yeah, yeah, keep him busy. But look, after that introduction, I'm not sure how to. Like, there's a lot of pressure on me now to follow in with that. So, wow. Thank you, Damien. Nothing to stress the public. Our viewers are waiting to listen from what you have to speak. You know, the COVID has absolutely shut every borders. It has closed every country. Hasn't left spared anyone. But what's your viewpoint? How how the things going at the UN? Oh, so, you know, from the end of us here at the um, in the perspective of the community, for example, just being an individual now within it, uh, you know, there's a lot of, I guess, fear of the unknown and uncertainty. But I think that the, um, the thing that we need to remember is that we're Australians and we stick together through tough times and, and in good times as well. And, uh, you know, during the droughts and the and the bushfires that we um, you know, we helped each other out. And I don't think this should be any different. I think the context though has changed a bit because when you're helping somebody else, it's a lot easier than when you are the person who may be affected by something. So there's a lot of fear out there and uncertainty, but uh, I think we've got all levels of government working together to find the best way that they can make things uh, better uh, and, and to address the issues. Great, great, absolutely. Australian, the government of Australia, the Prime Minister of Australia, Scott Morrison, has released a lot of packages which has been very, very helpful for the community. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, I'm really impressed with the way the federal government's leading by example. They're communicating, they're answering questions, they're making sure that people are informed about what's going on, so there's no air of mystery. And I uh, do appreciate those updates. And today there was even an update about uh, uh, free childcare for, um, for the essential workers, uh, such as those working in the medical industry like yourself. But uh, at the end of the day, it's the government uh, of, of, of even the state as well. I, I think they're doing the best they can. And the thing that we need to remember is that they're not making haphazard decisions without any rhyme or reason there. Uh, making decisions based on the information they have at the time and things can change really quickly. So sometimes they say something today and tomorrow it's a little different. That's because uh, new information informs them about better ways to approach something or that a decision they've made might have been a little too 
drastic and they need to pull that back a bit. I think one example was the, the hairdressers. Half an hour, you get with a hairdresser and, and uh, there were some rules around that and that then changed the next day to give a bit more time uh, for people to sit with their hairdressers and that's okay. Right. Yeah, it's part of it's part of the learning process. Yeah, we have been hearing 160 billion for businesses, thousand five hundred dollars per fortnight for every eligible individual who has been affected with COVID-19, released by our honourable Prime Minister Como. So, is it really going to make up a big change, a big impact into the Australian community? I think, number one, I was very impressed and surprised that that package came out because that's a big investment in, in Australia as a whole. And uh, the thing to uh, remember is that even when the global financial crisis came out, we had a $40 billion uh, package as well that went out, stimulus package. But uh, I, I guess the thing for me uh, of all that is that it, it will make a difference in some ways, but the challenge for businesses are that they are, uh, again, the fear factor perhaps and that their bottom lines have been hit so hard that maybe the, the package doesn't help them in the way that keeps them going and it doesn't cover all their costs, which is, which is a very difficult thing to, uh, to try and wear during such a financial crisis. I mean, government's asking for patience and time uh, to be able to work through these issues and to help businesses. And one thing to consider is, is a lot of people say, well, you know, with this virus now, should we have acted earlier or should we wait a little longer? And there's no formula to this. There's no right answer True. Absolutely. to that's how right. we manage this. And so we have to have that balance. And, and that's what I think the federal government's looking to do is to have a balance between acting too early and damaging the economy uh, beyond recognition or to, to scale the solution to fit the problems as the information comes in. So let's not overreact, but let's also think about best ways that we can Go forward, and I congratulate them on right. thinking that. Uh, I had been, we had been listening to our different viewers across the globe, and mostly from Australia. They have been most of the time. They had been keep on telling big cities across the globe has been absolutely shut, including Mumbai from India, including New Delhi from India, the country of 1.3 billion people. The country is absolutely shut. Milan from Italy, the whole country is being absolutely shut. London is shut. The country New Zealand is being locked down. Well, why? Australia hasn't taken such a step ahead. Was there a reason from your experience? What do you think? What, what could be the reason, uh, you know, the Prime Minister or the Government of Australia could have thought on that? Well, um, as I've mentioned, there is a balance, in my opinion, and from my own experiences. So when you overreact and or perhaps even not react quick enough, and the information that you have at the time and as you process and you look around what's happening in the world, you make informed decisions as best as you can. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think that if they react too quickly and shut everything down, jobs are lost, people are unprepared. We saw the rush that happened in the supermarkets as well. When fear takes over, people begin to uh, to stock up on, on things that they don't normally buy or they don't normally buy a lot of. So I think in, in, in my opinion, anyway, the governments, both at state and federal, are doing the right thing by informing people, taking everything one step at a time, but not uh, just closing everything in one hit and saying, that's it, stay home, never leave again, uh, and um, you know, we'll put everything on hold for the next three months or something like that, because that's dangerous. And again, I think they're trying to keep jobs going as long as they can. Uh, to minimize uh, the long-term impact of what's happening with the virus. Because bi once business is shut and they're gone, you don't necessarily ever get From the current affairs recently, uh, millions of tons of equipment, not equipment, the tissue papers, gloves, uh, all those hand washers has been exported from Australia to different countries across the globe and nothing has been done and people are being a bit worried. The reason was that um, the normal public in Australia couldn't get what was required at the time of, time of such a virus threat and now Australia has completely stopped every exports from the country until further notice. What's your thought, what's, what's your thought on that? 
Yeah, no, look, I hear what you're saying. Supplies are low. And, and again, it comes down to that, uh, what I call the fear of missing out, FOMO, if you will. Uh, essentially, uh, people who are fearful and perceive that they will miss out on uh, the essentials if they don't get it early. So sure. they buy a lot. And the problem is then, then it spirals out because other people see them doing it. And they'll call their families and say, hey, get out now and get stuff while you still can. And there's no reason to do that because we have lots of stock. But mm. people will then get fearful. They don't want to miss out on the opportunity to get things before they run out. But in doing so actually creates the problem of things uh, running out. So they create the very problem that they were worried would happen. And wow. uh, yeah, look, it would be great to get some imports coming in where, and I do know some are coming in where we're getting hand sanitizers and so forth great. from international sources because they don't, their shortages aren't necessarily our shortages. We ran mm. out of toilet paper very early on. Other countries did not have that issue with toilet paper, but they had issues with other oh, sorts yeah. of items as well. So there's a bit of, so we've got what we need. It's just that, yeah, it's just when it runs out in one place, other places have it. So that's yeah. that import export, I would think would be quite important to keep supplies going. But our local, I do know local businesses and manufacturers as well. I was just speaking to someone from uh, one of the paper mill companies here in Australia uh, just okay. the other day. And they're working overtime to get as much paper out as they can. So we're talking toilet papers and rolls. Oh, really there's great. a big demand. So all the businesses are stepping up that can produce these sort of items to fill okay. the gap. And uh, I think we have to remember that while you see an empty shelf, uh, that's because I think a lot of the time the supermarkets don't even have the chance to stock it back on the shelf before people take it and get out. So you think that they don't have the stock, but the stock was there. People just rushed in and grabbed it before it even hit the shelf. Ah, oh, wonderful. That's really good to hear that from you, Damien. And what, what do you think, you know, about the community workers? There are a lot of community people, the volunteers who have been coming out even during the bushfire crisis when we had it in Australia, even during COVID-19, especially certain community groups have, have stepped up, you know, to do something out of the box, helping people. So what, what's your thought on that? Well, I've always said that community uh, volunteers are the backbone of our of our country. And the thing is, you, you can't afford to pay the volunteers what they do. They just do it in such an amazing and, and giving way, and they don't ask for anything in return. So those Great. people going out right now, giving the uh, giving food out to people uh, and, and helping the people who are isolated and can't get out, especially yeah, the elderly. And that's the right. People, those people are very important. The ones who, uh, even the ones who are paid, I, I respect a lot. Those in the healthcare system who are going out there putting themselves at risk to serve others. Yeah, sure, some might say it's a paid job, but at the end of the day, they're also making a choice to go out there and brave the situation to help other people and to keep others healthy and safe. So, you know, from my heart to, to those volunteers, to the people out in the, in, in the medical professions and, and to others who are helping in their own way, congratulations to you all. I do know the Sikh volunteers, for example, of Australia were giving out free food until recently. Now the, the stage restrictions and the viruses have, have, uh, have unfortunately taken over and they're not able to deliver uh, the food as they, um, as they normally would have with the vans. They're still delivering meals to houses, but not putting the vans out where people can come in and, oh, and okay. get food. At yeah, to my information, which I have received even yesterday, yeah. they have delivered approximately 794 yeah. meals. So uh, they can still go to people's houses, absolutely. Okay. And you're absolutely right. But uh, they would also go out, and, and different food vans as well from St. Vinny's and so forth would go out to different locations and they'll wait there half an hour and people would come up and get necessary supplies from them and then they move to another location because of the restrictions here in victoria for example down to uh, gatherings of no bigger than two people uh, they're unable to do that because any more than two people turn up it's already against the law and oh, against the right. rules and there is a lot of respect for those rules of course because these are lives we're talking about and keeping people safe but credit to the sick volunteers and to other services for going out to people's homes and still right. giving them that food package and that's important so to the volunteers out there if you're watching and you're listening uh keep doing what you're doing you know you're good people and we know you're putting yourselves at risk and we appreciate you so much to each and every one of you out there oh wonderful damien thanks a lot so before we leave before we end this let's connect what's your general advice to the australian public 
from Damien Rosario. What's the best to keep you safe? Would you have some words well, for our viewers to keep them safe from this COVID-19? Let's smile. Let's keep smiling. We have, we have to. So what's your best advice for that? Well, number one, listen to the government advice. It sounds extreme to keep social distancing, which was never a thing until now. Uh, but it's for our own safety. And sometimes we get a little uh, complacent, a little lazy uh, yeah. with, with the rules and washing hands. But we just need to remember to, to do the best we can on that, to keep an eye out, to stay vigilant. But uh, most importantly, can I ask everyone as a community member, as, as well as, as someone who's uh, who's appreciating what the government's doing and who's who's been there before, is to stay calm and trust in the people around us and our governments to look after us. We're not in the, the olden days where we were disconnected from other people who, um, and we didn't have good medical care and, and information. This is the age of the internet. We have mobile phones. We have up-to-date things on Facebook and, and uh, on websites to be able to keep us informed. So we're not the way we were before. If we need help, we can put a message out and the help will come to us. So to say that we're going to miss out on the essentials to be able to say that we're, we're not going to put food on our tables and to support our families is, uh, in my opinion, not at all factual because we have a lot out there and we're connected in a way that we will be helped when we need it. So please don't rush into your supermarkets, don't hoard things because if we hoard things that creates the panic that we're trying to avoid. Stay calm, look after each other and, and just, and, Take this moment to enjoy each other's company. You know, we, we say we're stuck at home. We're not really stuck at home. We're safe at home. And I think that's the main thing we need to remember. This is, this is for our safety. And when things are over, I think in life, we're really going to appreciate the little things we never appreciated before. Human contact, the ability to shake someone's hand, to sit down for a cup of coffee with someone. Great. Yeah. These are all the things that we never appreciated before, but I think we're going to uh, appreciate very much when this ordeal is passed and we will get through this together. So Thank you. keep your Thank spirits you up find, and we'll find a way forward together. And Wonderful. people like you, Finney, who are holding uh, these messages and, and sharing uh, different insights and different perspectives, this is helping people to understand different ways to look at this problem. So congratulations to you and your crew. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part. Thank you, Damien. Thanks a lot. That was a general advice. That was the best advice to keep your 1.5 meters of distance. Follow what the government has to tell you. The best, keep safe, stay safe, stay home. That was the advice. It's not, before you leave, I have a vote for you. It's not what's the biggest position you hold makes you a leader, but it's what, what the place we have for you in our hearts. Thank you, Damien, for your best time. Thank you for your precious time for the Zen4 TV's Let's Connect. Have a great day. Thanks a lot, Damien. Thank you.